another look now and take some time for him. I know cut trees with paper, cause it hurts the environment. Stop deforestation, yeah, it's time for him. Oh, an acre of hemp makes 20 barrels of oil. Pesticides to poison all our soil. People got no food, they got no clothes, they got no rent. Well, right now, it's time for hemp. Thank you for taking time for hemp. I'm your host, Casper Leach. You are listening to Time for Hemp on Tumble or SoundCloud. And of course, iHeartRadio. We are the only. All Cannabis Broadcasting Network, 24 hours a day, seven days a week on, on iHeartRadio. Or a, as a matter of fact, I think just about anywhere on the Internet. And we ask you to share us with your friends. A big thank you to KDK Distributors who give us a grant to keep us loud, proud, and strong. All my love to the hardworking people up in <laughs> Canada. You do an amazing job as leaders in the hemp Industry. I want to remind people that uh, you can tune in and listen to Al Graham every Monday night at 6 p.m. broadcast from Canada. Talk about the wonderful industry up there. And I also want to say thank you to Judge James Gray for another fantastic report this month. Make it a point to go to timeforhemp.com. Check out the archives of all of our guests and you can find all of their programming free to download into your smart devices, and to share with your friends in an email. It is Thursday, and on Thursday we put a spotlight on what's going on in America. And we have a lot of amazing activists in America. Some are working in medical marijuana. Some are working in trying to free people from behind bars. Others are putting out great tasty foods that are derived from this wonderful plant. And uh, all together we make one huge industry that my friend Paul Stanford, also the joint host of today's program, knows an awful lot about. Don't forget, anytime you hear the word joint on the big broadcast, nearly 2.5 million people all around the world pack their pipes, their bongs, their vaporizers, and twist up a joint and take time for him. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Casper. I know you are pretty active in the field of industrial hemp as well. You you do have a lot of dispensaries involving with the medical marijuana aspect of this plant, but I clinics, also know clinics. that they're not dispensaries. They're they're clinics oh, where clinics. doctors work. I'm sorry, clinics. That's right, where people are Got able it. to get their medications. But I also know that you're also growing now farms and acres of hemp yeah, for that's hemp true. seed. That's true. That's true. Growing and giving away free marijuana through our THCF medical marijuana clinics. Uh, we help patients get their permits, and I'm able to help a limited number of patients through our gardens to date in a charitable uh, activity. And so uh, we're looking with the regulation of dispensaries uh, at uh, uh, expanding into that, but we haven't yet. All right, well, we have somebody on today as our joint guest who's been working uh, with a lot of his joint friends in his area to uh, create some great hemp products and uh, I think you might know each other Robert Davis he's up in Washington good morning Robert good morning good morning Casper have you and Paul had a chance to meet at the Seattle Hemp Fest before no we haven't I've been uh, you know wanting to get over there many many times and have always had uh, some other uh, activities pull me away, but uh, you know, kudos and uh, my, my highest regards uh, to uh, to Paul's efforts and uh, and Hemp Fest always. Yeah, I think Paul, you've been a guest speaker at the Seattle Hemp Fest. How many years in a row now? Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a few, but uh, uh, when you talk about hemp, um, I, as many of your listeners know worked with Jack Herr on the first edition of his uh, The Emperor Wears No Clothes and in the dedication of that, which uh, was written in my house back in 1985. And then started imp I went to school in China and started importing hemp paper and fabric from China back in uh, 
started working toward it in 1989, right, when there were a lot of social upheaval going on with the Tiananmen Massacre in China. But our first container loads of hemp products started to arrive from China in 1991. So then the Great Book of Hemp says our my companies in Portland, Oregon, were the first to import hemp paper and fabric for several gener- generations. But uh, that's according to his research. <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, Robert, when did you get involved with industrial hemp and hemp products? Back in uh, probably 2006 and and seven, and uh, then became uh, R&D director for a company called Living Harvest and uh, developed the first uh, kind of refined hemp milk product called Tempt and developed the first hemp ice cream at that level, uh, the Tempt ice cream line. Uh, and then went on again after uh, Living Harvest kind of shifted some gears a few years ago and started uh, really the first functional hemp food company called The Hemp Food Company, uh, developing a line of, uh, of meat analogs, particularly uh, hemp burgers, uh, primarily with hemp is the first ingredient, followed by uh, brown rice and pea protein, a soy gluten-free product. And all of this kind of hinges on my 30-some years in food development. And I developed the first tofu hot dog in the United States in the late 70s and uh, have gone on to develop. I developed the first hemp cheese called Hemparella back in uh, the mid-90s. So uh, I've always been kind of looking at trends and uh, nothing more conscious has ever been blessed upon the planet than uh, the hemp plant. And uh, at these times, probably the mushroom. But uh, but hemp is my focus at the moment. And uh, um, we're just on the verge right now of, uh, of getting the funding we need to launch really the first functional hemp food line uh, into the United States. Now, what, what do you mean by hemp food line? Is it going to be uh, like... Uh, all one style of food, like all snacks. Or are you going uh, across the board? We're doing center plate with uh, with burgers, basically a line of burgers and sausages and uh, jerky, hemp jerky, and we have a line of hemp chips. Um, so it's just kind of the top of the iceberg of all the things that we're going to be doing. And are these available in all states or just one state? Or They will be available. We're right now prototyping out, and we've got uh, our production facility. Uh, that We have one small facility uh, in Canada, and we're looking at really working in Colorado to set up the ideal facility. And that's really the focus where we can bring, bring the seed uh, right into the facility, close at hand, and produce the food almost in a classic macrobiotic sense. Okay, now one of the things that I've said over and over uh, in the past is the importance of uh, legalization for industrial hemp. Well, there's a lot of reasons. One of being uh, standardiz- standardization and having oversight, uh, product uh, development and production. And uh, now who comes in and checks your kitchens, checks your foods, and checks your products that are going into your foods? Well, basically, that works out of the, our basic commodity supply side. So, uh, again, you can, uh, you can utilize hemp seed, uh, hemp nut here in the United States without any real problem. I mean, there's been, as you know, lots of uh, uh, hemp this is and that's uh, kind of created it on the marketplace. So it really comes back from the grower and uh, that that's where the regulation is really set up so we're not seeing anything aside from standard uh, you know food practices and FDA USDA if need uh, supervision and we also look at uh, other levels of supervision whether it's organic certs or gluten-free certs and kosher certs but uh, we're not seeing any problem right now in producing food well I, I had to ask that because uh, there isn't really a hemp industry yet in this country, and I know that when I worked for a shoestring potato chip company, 
back in the late 70s, even back then, we had inspectors coming in from FDA, making sure everything was clean, all of our products were proper, and sure. that type of thing. And with the hemp industry being so new, uh, I don't. How do you get your product done? I know our farmers aren't growing. I guess you're importing everything from another country and making it from here. Canada. Or what? Yes, yes, we bring all of our uh, all of our seed and nut in from Canada. That's the that's the logical place to make sure we get a quality source. Paul, I pass the questions over to you. Um. So. You've been doing your 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 companies, the the hemp food company. Yes. And so, uh, tell me, tell us about. Do you have products currently on the market, or are you getting investment to come onto the market? Or that's what we're. That's the point exactly that we're at is bringing in. We're looking for for investment. We have uh, some uh, some individuals posturing at this point. Uh, and we're really looking at Colorado. I'm sending out a proposal today to a good friend of mine that's uh, been quite involved in the hemp industry, Richard Rose, for quite so many years. And uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, Richard was the one who founded Hemprella. He'd been doing Soyrella for a long exactly. time there. So I'm I'm working with Richard on this project as well in Colorado. Oh, great. Um. So what's the next step for you? The next step for me is to uh, find conscious investment. And I say that because uh-huh. it's important that uh, we move forward as a foundation with hemp, with, uh, with conscionable intent. And uh, I've been in business long enough to know that that's not necessarily the underpinning of a lot of uh, uh, investments in the marketplace. But hemp, I think, is sacrosanct. That's, and that's true. And it's really important that the foundation be be uh, uh, really steeped with the right energetic. So um, that's really who I'm looking to wed this uh, this tremendous opportunity. There's nothing on the market uh, close to what I've developed. And uh, to be a soy gluten free alternative in the marketplace with hemp as the first ingredient is uh, really kind of revolutionary. So have you been experimenting with these foods? I have for uh, over three years. I have four products ready to go to market at this point. And um, we're just uh, we're just really ready to take the next step and move into production. So you said hemp burgers yes, and chips are among those? Yes, I've got three hemp burgers and a, and a hemp sausage and a line of, uh, of hemp chips with uh, hemp and pea protein and masa. And uh, a wonderful hemp jerky that is uh, tremendously outstanding and uh, really is my favorite product because of its sustainability and its shelf-stable qualities, which allows it to be shipped anywhere globally without refrigeration. So um, you want to tell our audience a little bit about the nutritional properties of uh, hemp seed protein and oil? Well, basically, I'm sure a lot of folks can just, go, you know, basically go online, but it's about the omega structure and the amino acid structure that really does uh, advantage hemp because for years, soy has been what I thought was the mana product. I started as a tofu maker um, in the mid 70s and uh, really got involved with tofu because of how I saw soy being used uh, in reference to cattle feed and um, oil. So it, I saw a tremendous opportunity wedding more or less an Eastern diet model with uh, the preparation of, of uh, tofu and tempeh products. And I'm a tremendous fan really of the ferments and miso. So looking at hemp, the analogous structure of amino acids, um, almost close to, uh, to soy. And obviously the protein position being as strong as it is in the omega the omega oil benefits uh, just, you know, principally uh, sets it apart at this point in time based on its its really agro-friendly uh, environmental position and its ability to grow in strained, stressed environments. And uh, to me, it's the answer moving into the immediate future of our agroeconomic uh, perils as drought conditions 
start to uh, kind of become more manifest. Do you also have a uh, company or a, a project, New Edge Systems? Um, I'm just uh, Casper had pointed out that we are LinkedIn on LinkedIn, and so yes. uh, I was looking at your your profile here. Uh, tell us about New Edge Systems. Well, New Edge Systems is uh, primarily about the cutting edge of food design and development. Um, I have been fortunate to, uh, uh, I guess, track and also be invited into uh, opportunities that uh, are emerging uh, on the planet and in the marketplace. And uh, my specialty is uh, in advancing uh, micro businesses, uh, community scale businesses, and uh, companies that are interested in uh, taking the next step into the frontier of positive foods. And uh, that's really has been my focus. And as you look at newedgesystems.com, the website, it speaks uh, to that, uh, that effort over the last probably 35 years. I see. I see. So um, you worked at, at uh, Living Harvest on their temp products. Tell us more about that. Well, that was uh, just an exciting opportunity because there had really not been any particular, uh, I guess, uh, steps in the evolution of hemp milk. Um, and we were looking at trying to advance it more into a general milk category. So uh, I was fortunate to be lead designer on that program and and uh, establish what I thought was uh, pretty much the next frontier as far as drinkability for hemp products, and then uh, move into the uh, hemp ice cream line, Tempt, and uh, develop really the first major rollout of a uh, of a hemp-based ice cream. I see. So um, how did you do that? I mean, how do you develop a hemp-based ice cream and, and uh, things like that? <laughs> Well, it goes along with uh, quite a few years of experience. Um, uh, you know, I div I've had several. I've had an ice cream company called Believe, which was the first organic soy, organic rice blend ice cream company. I also developed uh, Soy Dream, which was uh, Imagine Foods' uh, major rollout of a soy ice cream. And uh, have really quite a few years of experience. Uh, also developed the Good Karma uh, rice uh, divine ice cream. So uh, a lot of history in uh, understanding non-dairy ice creams <clears throat> and then looking at the really uh, rollover into a hemp-based protein system. And uh, that was basically the, the segue from using soy or using rice to really plugging in hemp uh, as the lead protein source. Well, so that, it, go ahead. that was a wonderful word to use, in fact, because it is time to segue into a commercial break. And then we're going to listen to a song about how fantastic marijuana is. And then when we come back, we're going to pick up where we left off here at Time for Hemp. are listening to the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends. THCF Medical Clinics are the premier physician's clinic in the United States. THCF has offices all across the United States from Hawaii to Michigan. THCF Medical Clinics has helped approximately 150,000 patients obtain their medical marijuana permits to legally possess, grow, and use medical marijuana. If you have chronic pain, multiple sclerosis, or any other neurological degenerative disease, or if you have any gastro intestinal disorders such as GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, or if you have AIDS, cancer, spastic disorders, seizure disorders, or glaucoma, call us at 1-800-723-0188 or visit us online at hemp.org. Again, the number is 1-800-723-0188. 
And the site is H-E-M-P dot O-R-G. Where is your dealer when you need him the most? You just got paid, but you're all out of dope. Well, you can't live your life this way. You haven't had a buzz in days. And that ain't no fucking joke. You pick up the phone. Call a few friends Just to find a few seeds And a couple of stems I don't think you'll get high that way You'll probably drive around all day But you won't find any smoke Cause it's another dry day There's nothing around All the cash in the world would buy you an ounce You really don't know You're ready to cry Well how can you smile If you ain't getting high Another dry day going out of your mind I'm sorry to say But you wasted your time Another dry day It's another dry day Needed to get high yesterday You better get on your knees and pray Chief Green Bud's on the way Cause it's another dry day There's nothing around All the cash in the world would buy you an ounce You really don't know You're ready to cry How can you smile if you ain't getting high Another dry day going out of your mind Sorry to say, but you wasted your time Another dry day Well, it's another dry day Where is your dealer when you need him the most? You just got paid and you're all out of dope It's another dry day Nothing around All the cash in the world Would buy you an ounce You really don't know You're ready to cry well, How can you smile If you ain't getting high Another dry day Going out of your mind I'm Sorry to say But you wasted your time It's another dry day well, It's another dry day It's another dry day This is Time for Hemp Heard all around the world on Tumblr, iTunes, SoundCloud And of course, iHeartRadio Like a good joint, we are best when shared with friends That was Chief Greenbud Having a dry day, Chief Greenbud comes to Potland Hot Hempstock occasionally and performs. He's a fantastic talent. Check out his website, buy some CDs. Let him know that you heard about him here on the big broadcast. And I can certainly tell you if Chief Greenbud was living here in Potland, Oregon, he would never, ever, ever have a dry day. Ain't that right, Paul Stanford? Well, marijuana is easier to get here than just about anywhere else, and it's cheaper, so there's no need for it. That's absolutely right, and I'm to assume that is the very same thing that's occurring up there in Washington for you uh, there, Robert? It is. Washington is uh, one of the more happening states uh, on the map, as you know. So it's uh, it's exciting, and we're, again, looking at... Uh, Moving more and more into the industrial hemp range as we uh, as we move forward here into this year, because that really is the frontier that uh, I've been working with uh, over the last several years. And 
uh, it is it is the next logical step in our agrarian future. Well, speaking of our agrarian future, I got to let you know, Robert, and one of the reasons why it's been difficult for me to be a spokesperson for the hemp food industry is a couple of times, several times I've gone to uh, places where they have edibles, medibles, and uh, every time I bite into one, it feels like I'm tasting somebody's backyard, and the last time I I sampled uh, marijuana hemp uh, food, uh, someone had made a wonderful looking uh, pineapple upside down cake, uh, the brown sugar looked amazing, the pineapple ring with the cherry on top was just luscious. I bit into it, and it tasted like yard. Now, I also, I'm a big fan of eating real meats and tasty meats. Now, I do want to support the hemp movement and the hemp industry. Uh, You want to describe some of the tasting sensations that I might experience that might make me go, ooh, my God, this is fabulous, on your product line? Sure. Well, what, what again, uh, I've done over the years is I, I certainly do pride myself in creating quality products, uh, not only nutritionally, but, uh, but uh, as far as organoleptically, products that, that taste wonderful. It's not going to make any sense to put something on the market that no one's going to eat. And this is something with hemp, as you know, it's uh, from experiencing the hemp nut that's readily available in the market. Uh, it's 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 a wonderful nutty light sweet flavor, so uh, I really do use that to its fullest advantage, and wed that in such a way that I've been able to create a, a number of burgers and sausages, uh, particularly a a sweet Maui onion burger, a sweet Maui onion burger with shiitake mushrooms, that's absolutely uh, exceptional, and I've got a a, a Southwest burger with jalapenos that's also just extremely luscious. And I have an original burger, which is kind of like a grill uh, type flavor burger that uh, most people would, uh, would relate to as being kind of a standard burger flavor. And then I have a sausage that uh, is really exactly on par with what people would view as a morning star uh, soy sausage and the flavors associated with that product. So it's been a painstaking process for me that I've loved over the last year and a half creating a seasoning that is quite deep and does uh, reflect the highest possible flavor notes and still being a non-GMO seasoned product. So uh, those those I think would uh, would set your uh, your taste buds on fire. All right now Paul I know you've got some more questions so I'll go ahead and puff my pipe and let you pipe up. Okay, so um, you said you worked with uh, Richard Rose and uh, the Soyrella and Hemprella people developing tea. So, yes. Uh, tell us more about developing these uh, dairy products with hemp protein. Well, that goes back uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, I was actually producing those products with Richard in Canada. And uh, it was just uh, pretty funny on getting product across the border that time, you know, listing hemp on the ingredient. It's come a long way. Um, But, uh, you you know, we used used the whole seed. We used the whole seed. And uh, basically it was a milling process, a soaking process uh, to really create uh, a hemp milk base that was then used uh, in the cheese making process, uh, but the, really the, the the challenges often were getting it across the border into the U.S. Once we made it in Canada, uh, but again, as you know, anything uh, that's analogous to milk and getting hemp hemp seed hemp nut uh, rendered into a milk format then opens up all the different production possibilities that milk has traditionally been utilized for. Okay. Um, So, I'm not sure exactly what to ask now, Casper. Why don't I let you take over? (laughs) Look, if somebody's interested in tasting your tasty treats, how do they get get samples? 
Well, basically, they can contact me uh, through the website. Uh, we've got the newedgesystems.com or my, uh, my actual website that I'm using right now is uh, sun, S-U-N, at Whidbey, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y dot com, Whidbey Island, where I'm uh, residing for the next several days before I move on. Uh, but that, that particular address, the S-U-N at Whidbey dot com, will, uh, will certainly connect somebody. Uh, with me, and uh, we can arrange to uh, to have samples sent out, and uh, uh, certainly discuss uh, conscious investment at this point, uh, because it's uh, it is time. It is time for these products to reach the marketplace. Well, now another aspect of this is okay. Here you are. You're the you're the guy who invented the uh, original soy hot dog. Yeah, and so you got a pretty good credential, background, nice resume. And I can only assume that if you wanted to get involved in the tofu industry or the soy industry or any other industry that was legal and that was blooming and thriving uh, and, and not facing a variety of complications, you could have easily done so and made a big chunk of change for your own bank account and probably be sitting at home right now watching friend, Friends and, and Frasier reruns and not having any cares. Yet you... <laughs> That you have chosen the, the hemp industry to go for. Why is that? What was it about the hemp industry that made you say, no, this is the path I'm going? Well, it's a, it's a path of high logic. Um, I've got a graduate degree in planetary development, which basically uh, it was allowing me to look at cosmogenesis and anthropogenesis and a few other things in the long-term scheme of, of how this planet functions. And uh, again, being drawn to soy as a way to feed people globally um, was really uh, the moniker uh, initially when I came out of graduate school and, and really looked for how I could be of service at the highest possible level. Uh, but through the years, uh, looking and tracking all the trends in the food industry, it became instantly apparent uh, when I looked into hemp, that this was truly our planetary solution um, on on a number of levels uh, and was drawn to how could I wed my experience with food with hemp. And the more I looked into it, the more it became obvious that uh, by employing certain production techniques that I have refined and certain certain ways of working with food textures, that I can, in fact, create delicious uh, whole foods with hemp and integrate hemp into the matrix of the existing food system we have in the U.S. And I saw nothing but positives inherent to that possible scenario. Okay, now you were working with the Canadian companies, right? Green Harvest or... Yeah, we're yeah. working well, as far as bringing in hemp seed and so forth. There's several growers up there uh, that uh, that are growing hemp and and uh, credibly, and uh, yes, that that is our hemp supply. All right. So, um, are they going to be able to distribute your product uh, in, into Canada for you? Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, there's so there's there's no problem really with doing that. Again, the food side is uh, as much as regulation uh, holds, holds sway in, in a lot of these other areas, uh, as long as the seed can be registered um, and, 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 uh, and qualified at the source, uh, it's, it's got abundant allowance now in the states as far as being allowed into food products. But the interesting thing is no one has really developed a system like I have to integrate these foods with hemp. And so that's really the exciting dimension for me is to look at it as a linchpin that the products I'm developing hopefully will illumine the rationale that, yes, hemp is a viable food commodity and not only viable, but can be uh, an extensive um, uh, uh, amplification of, of possibilities for uh, the emergent agroeconomic interests in this country and particularly worldwide. Now, this has got to be a daunting task. Now, I know when I go into Trader Joe's, they've got some hemp products. I think Safeway's got maybe hemp milk and a couple other hemp products on their shelves. <clears throat> but, 
you know, you're competing against the uh, major corporations that have a variety of different products that they put on all the shelves. And I can only assume it's got to be a daunting task to get your homemade product into all the grocery stores across the United States. How do you go about doing that? Well, you first of all, it's, it would not be a homemade product. It would be produced, you know, in a conventional facility that produces uh, analog products, burger products, uh, hot dog products, etc. I understand, but in essence, that is a homemade product, something you developed out of your own kitchen. You made a few for your friends and said, taste this. Then you went sure. down and rented a factory area and said, now let's do it on mass production. And go. in all honesty, mm -hmm. you're just a little mom and pop. It'd be like having, oh, I came up with a brand new chocolate fudge. I want to get my chocolate fudge in all the shelves across the United States. I mean, there's got to be a variety of hurdles that one's got to jump just to get a great product on the shelf. Well, there's there's a standard uh, process that's involved that would employ a broker network traditionally uh, looking at Whole Foods uh, regional launch uh, uh, scenarios, uh, presentations here and there. But the unique thing about this is that there is no other product on the market. We're not we're not competing as a soy burger. We're not competing as a gluten product, something that's out there already. We're coming in with hemp as a lead ingredient and with a matrix that's soy and gluten free. Because of that unique positioning, there will be a place for this product everywhere because there is no competition in that niche. Well, I've got to say that's true with the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. We have looked all around the world trying to find someone, anyone who's doing anything like we are so we can figure out if we're doing it right or not. And we are also pioneers. And with that said, we got a pioneer into a commercial break and then pick up where we left off here at Time for Hemp. source for quality cannabis and sativa seeds. Serious Seeds are the creators of legendary strains like AK-47, Bubblegum, Chronic Cali Mist, and White Russian. The AK-47 is probably the most avoided strain on the planet. The high THC content of AK-47 makes it the perfect medical strain for patients seeking quick pain relief. Cali Mist is an almost pure sativa. Female medical cannabis patients have reported that this strain helps relieve menstrual cramps. Serious Seeds just acquired another Dutch high-quality seed bank, Magus Genetics. From now on, Serious Seeds can offer you even more award-winning strains. The fine folks at Serious Seeds strive to breed the best cannabis genetics that they can find, so patients can rely on the effectiveness of their medicine. Go to SeriousSeeds.com to grow your medicine. That site again is SeriousSeeds.com. Well, I went and had a bowl, good green reefer, big fat don't be much, much sweeter. Mighty don't hide it. Mighty don't hide it. Yes, mighty don't hide it. Mighty don't hide it. Well, mighty don't hide it. Fire up right now. Yeah, fire up right now. Be loud, be proud. Come out of the closet. Stand shoulder to shoulder with us in our foxholes. On the front lines here in the war on drugs, we are trying to end these horrific prohibition laws all around the world. Time for hemp is like a good joint, best when shared with friends, so please make it a point to make that happen. We are having a wonderful Thursday chat with 
Paul Stanford as my joint host here on the big broadcast and Robert Davis, who is creating great foods out of this wonderful plant. Now, Robert, it, a lot of people are oblivious to the fact that uh, there's been a couple of famines and, uh, and, and there's a lot of people in America who don't even know what the word famine is unless they look it up in a dictionary. I mean, we've been so blessed in this country, but there has been a handful of famines that people have survived because they had hemp seed porridge and they had the hemp plant to feed their country's nations. And a lot of people are blind to the fact that hemp foods have kept mankind alive on a num numerous occasions and has been the sole form of nutrition. So I can only assume that if we had a, a, a diet strictly of hemp, foods it would be a better uh, uh, body that we would be walking around in <clears throat> well it would certainly be a good start uh, in reference to the quality of the protein and the quality of the uh, uh, omega oils that uh, we would be getting as a result but again the fact that the plant grows in stressed environments uh, cannot be understated, cannot be understated at this point in time based on what we're experiencing and soon will experience in California, one of the breadbasket states of the United States. This is an issue that, you know, really needs to be understood. And, uh, you know, a lot of issues that come, come upon us uh, during these challenging times uh, often uh, uh, are seen but literally not heard. And by hearing, I mean this is something that really needs to be integrated into the conscious matrix of uh, uh, lawmakers and, and farmers alike to really mobilize and, uh, and actualize uh, the opportunity of bringing hemp uh, both medically and certainly industrially into the fold of uh, the conventional food matrix. And that's why I started the company, the Hemp Food Company, to basically illumine the fact that, yes, you can make food from hemp. And uh, here's how you do it. Uh, so I've got a PowerPoint. I've got information I can send individuals that can, again, ex kind of explain in depth what the Hemp Food Company has done and what it's doing. But again, as I mentioned earlier, it's about, it's about looking at hemp right now uh, in a new light, and the hemp food company represents a linchpin that shows and validates the viability of hemp uh, as a food source for the planet right now. Paul, we're getting down to the last few minutes. I know you got some, a couple more questions uh, for Robert here. I pass this over to you while I sit here and hit my pipe. <laughs> well, uh, Robert, so. You, your products are, have you, you tested them out there? Is there a place people can go to, to look at them? How do people reach you and, and get in touch with you, try out your product? Great. Well, again, where we're at is we're uh, looking at two production facilities, uh, one in Colorado and uh, one in Canada uh, that we'll actually be producing live samples from. And uh, those are within probably a 30-day window. So uh, these samples will be available, and we will have some test markets set up. But to contact me, uh, again, using my, my website, the sun, S-U-N, at Whidbey, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y, just like Whidbey Island, Whidbey.com, uh, I can be reached at that email address. And uh, we'd love to uh, be conversant with individuals that are interested in exploring uh, the food uh, uh, matrix of, of hemp and uh, pea rice protein systems. Do you have a website? The website I have right now is my design website. It's uh, newedgesystems.com www.newedgesystems.com I see. Okay. Uh, back to you, Casper. All right. So now the Products that you bring to the market, you've got about, what, seven different products that you're going to be sure you got chips and meats. Are you also developing other new tasty treats? Well, what we've, again, I've developed the ice creams and the milks and so forth, which uh, are always possibilities as far as moving into the future. 
but uh, it's it's about sustainability, and that's where the jerky line is. I mentioned earlier where we can go and deliver something that does not require refrigeration. That to me is an exciting, really corollary to the viability of hemp as a sustainable food system. And I think as we go into the immediate future, um, you know, we really need to look at these kind of products that are shelf stable. I've developed a nugget that's like a granule uh, made with hemp and pea protein and brown rice that really could be boxed into a 50 pound, 50 pound bag uh, in the context of calling it planet food that <laughs> people, could, people could buy and just store and rehydrate with water. So that's, uh, that's really one of the mission products that I, I really wanted to see offered. And uh, that's almost, almost like a dog food nugget, which would be a human dog food nugget. Um, and the pet food industry, again, is another huge, huge market for the products that, uh, that I've developed. All right. So now I also know that when I go to buy a shirt made of hemp, I'm going to pay more because I had to, uh, the, the company had to import the cloth. If I'm going to get some material printed on hemp paper, Paul's got some hemp paper, it's going to cost me a whole lot more because the pulp paper is cheap and just down the street at Kinko's. So now how does, does that also affect the pricing uh, with the well, food? Well, the interesting thing about, about hemp protein, if, if you're aware of the hemp protein system, uh, the hemp seed itself is, uh, is really not that expensive, whether it's a dollar a pound or a dollar 20 a pound or 80 cents a pound. And it, the real cost of, of hemp uh, is derived by the dehulling process. So to dehull, uh, uh, you know, a pound of hemp seed uh, at a dollar a pound, you add cost onto it to two and a half to three dollars a pound. And so that's really the exorbitant point right now for hemp. So how can how can you dehull the hemp? Or in my situation, I utilize the whole seed with the actual shell itself in a lot of my products. So there's no waste or discard. Uh, and different than the, the tofu making process, it's like including okara, okara, which is the hull of the soybean in with your food. But my system that I've developed utilizes the whole seed as well as different products that I utilize the nut. But to your point, uh, that's really the cost problem right now for hemp is this inefficient way of dehulling that adds, you know, two to three times the cost of the actual seed. Well, I also know up in Canada, the hemp industry is blessed by funding in some aspects, a little uh, undercut of funding, I guess, from the uh, parliament, from the government there in Canada. And uh, they promote, they help promote the hemp industry overseas so that the farm industry in Canada and the hemp industry in Canada can grow. I know we don't have that here in America, but are there uh, groups and organizations of, uh, for the hemp industry uh, that are now currently trying to work in, in junction with other countries and to help uh, grow this nation, nationally? Well, there's some fragment groups. You have, uh, you know, the Colorado Hemp Association and and uh, and uh, other state organizations that uh, have been, you know, kind of fledgling organizations, uh, but really very little that have uh, any type of, uh, of of major impact at this point in time, because you still have such such muddy waters between states' rights and uh, and uh, the, the 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 national sector uh, and who's who steps in uh, where the USDA steps in where the FDA steps in and uh, where states rights uh, are are honored so it's it's still a very very gray area uh, and uh, but it's you know through time it's emerging and and the crystallization of this uh, is coming through organizations and companies like what I'm doing that can actually show the viability of hemp as a viable protein system that is a predominant ingredient. A lot of people have hemp food products out there and they throw a few hemp seeds in and call it a hemp whatnot. Well, that's great and I'm all for that, but uh, my system is such that I use hemp as the first primary ingredient and that that I believe in. Okay, so 
Now, another thing is that if someone has an idea for a hemp product, do they approach you? Do you just tell them to go make their own? Do you? Well, yeah, I would love to talk with someone if they're interested, you know, in making foods from hemp because of uh, my experience. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm readily available for discussion on that. Okay, so... Uh, you know, you're reaching out into the global market as well as as well as across America. Uh, do you see any opportunities for the hemp industry to be uh, growing its own industry, as it were? We're growing our own plants and we're creating our own products in all the states soon, or is oh, this going would, to be? An I, I would hope so. I mean, it, if it follows a line of logic, which is always challenging when you're dealing with human beings. But in this situation, um, you know, depending on climate and hybrids, and obviously there's optimal areas to grow hemp. Uh, you know, you've, that's why Manitoba uh, is, uh, is so popular and even some parts of Saskatchewan and you've got Dakotas and, you know, Colorado. There are certain environments that, that, are, that are better suited than others. But again, the ubiquitous nature of the application of the hemp plant really does allow it to be, uh, I think, nurtured and uh, and grown in all 50 states. Now, what is your favorite of all your products? I mean, if you had to say, ooh, this is what I really love, which one would that be? That would be the, uh, the uh, Sweet Maui um, Onion Burger with shiitake mushrooms. So yes. That so that so that's your star product. That's it cool. Is. It is. It's a it's a tremendous uh, tremendous hemp burger, and you know it will be our lead product as we go into the market. Well, now you say you're moving forward and you're and you're trying to get over the last few hurdles. Is there uh, any type of uh, assistance you could use in trying to get over any particular hurdles? Are you looking for any any type of uh, group or organization or? Well, the main thing is, again, uh, conscious funding, conscious funding, individuals that uh, want to see the planet uh, advance in reference to its food opportunities uh, can certainly contact me. Uh, and we have really a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for the right person or group to, uh, to invest in us at this time. And... Uh well, okay, we're down to the last couple of minutes for sure. Uh, any, uh, let's hear your last presentation to the general public, you know, like a little little advertisement for your foods. It would be? It would be for, uh, for individuals to basically look at uh, how they can improve their health and their well-being. Uh, in, in the most realistic way possible. And diet is certainly one of those avenues besides conscious positive thought. And uh, the hemp food plant uh, is really an opportunity right now to, to, to really fulfill, I think, a, a great need in, um, in supporting the human body and the human condition. And uh, the hemp food company uh, is really, it's, its mission is to amplify and illumine the positives inherent to, uh, to the hemp cannabis plant. Well, Robert, it has been quite an interesting conversation on the show today, and I know our audience has learned an awful lot. I want to thank you for being part of our family. I look forward to bringing you back again. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I would love to get back on the show here in a few months and let you know what our distribution pattern is and uh, the wonderful people that have stepped forward to help us advance the cause. We will make that happen. And Paul, you and I do a show every Friday night on uh, uh, Ustream, Ustream it, I think, and uh, Portland Community Cable Network. I am the joint host. Paul's been doing it for 16 years. And I think we're going on a hiatus for about a month or so, right, Paul? I'll let you tell about that. Okay, yeah, we've been, uh, I've been doing it since 1996, so we're uh, going on our 19th year now. But uh, you can watch Cannabis Common Sense live on the Internet at Ustream.tv. We're building up for the uh, global marijuana marches that are happening in almost 300 different cities around the world. Uh, we've got one here in Portland. Of course, there's one up in Seattle. 
The one in uh, Buenos Aires last year, they had 150,000 people march through the streets in Buenos Aires. And the one in Santiago, Chile, had uh, 175,000 people marched through the streets. It's about 5,000 in New York City. The cannabis parade in New York City was the first one of those. So we're gearing up with that. We'll be covering that tomorrow on our show. We also have Anthony Taylor, who uh, has been lobbying the Oregon legislature concerning the implementation of uh, legalized marijuana stores and its integration with the existing Oregon licensed cannabis dispensaries. So those are some of the topics we'll be covering on tomorrow's show. And uh, uh, you can watch us at Ustream.tv. It's been good doing a show with you there, Robert. And uh, best of luck in your enterprises. I'd love to taste that uh, shiitake mushroom hemp onion one, uh, do you ever do boosts or anything where you sell your products like that? Or are you just well, developing them for the, the retail yes. market? Yeah, we'll be doing some boosts as far as an outreach uh, very, very soon. That'll be part of our our uh, movement forward is really getting out there yes. in the streets. Yes. At the Seattle Hip Fest, you know, you can uh, uh, buy hip burgers there right now. Um, so maybe you want to try to sell some there. That'd be a perfect market for you. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful, Paul. Thank you so much. And I want to remind people that we are a group dedicated to ending prohibition, producing over 60 hours a week of original content about the need to end prohibition. Like a good joint, we are best when shared by friends. You can download our Google app for free from the Google Store. Of course, there's a Tumblr app, SoundCloud app. Facebook app, and of course, you can go to timeforhemp.com anytime, day or night, or Spreaker, and listen to us live as well. You can listen to us live in all the other apps. So if you're interested in staying in touch with the global marijuana movement, all you got to do is take Time for Hemp. Look at all that money, yeah, the money that they spent.